When building or upgrading your bike, it's easy to catch the upgrade bug and want to upgrade all the things. But there's some components where spending more money doesn't exactly mean getting more value out of the component, and you'll experience diminishing returns in these components. For a few parts, you can spend a baseline amount of money and still get away with a solid bike. Today, we'll take a look at where you can save money when upgrading your fixed gear. For each component, I'll give you a price range to shoot for along with a specific recommendation. And without further ado, let's get on with the list. First, the stem. The stem's job is to set the height and angle of the handlebars in order to achieve a proper bike fit. For regular riding, you don't need the ultimate strength to weight ratios that more expensive stems provide. An affordable stem will hold your bars firmly in the right position, and that's all it needs to do. For stems, let's just spend around $30 for a new one, or less if you're buying used. I recommend the Dimension stem, since it has a lot of dimension combinations for the length, angle, and clamp size. Pun intended. This is the stem that I use on my own bike, and it's affordable, and has a nice finish, and gets the job done. No more, no less. Number 2, Seat Post. Similar to the stem, the seat post job is to get the correct fit for the rider. Some things to keep in mind when looking for a seat post is the setback and length to make sure that you can get a proper fit. A nice feature to look for in seat post is a two-bolt system that allows you to minutely dial the angle and fore-aft of your saddle. This makes getting the correct fit a little easier, but isn't entirely necessary. I use a Chinelli pillar that costs around $25 new and has a two-bolt system. A cheaper one-bolt option like the Callan seat post is also a solid choice. Number 3, Hubs. When upgrading wheel sets, it's easy to get carried away and start looking at more expensive hub options, but for daily riding, the formula sealed bearing hub gives you the most bang for your buck by far. These hubs are extremely durable, with some on the forums reporting that they've built multiple wheel sets with the same pair of formula hubs. And since the hubs have seal bearings, they spin smoothly and are maintenance free. The Sun CR18 and Sun M13 from Velomine are, in my opinion, the best value wheel sets and cost about $120 without shipping. If you're looking for something a bit lighter and prettier, H Plus Sun TB14s or Archetypes are great choices and cost around $190 and $240 respectively. For daily riding, sealed formula hubs are the way to go, and anything nicer is mostly for the bling factor. Number 4. Chains. Yes, the NJS certified Izumi Super Toughness Chain is nearly unbreakable, runs smoothly, and looks impeccable. And yes, this chain costs $80. Moving down the chain spectrum, there's chains like the KMC X101 and K710SL that have features like mushroom pins and plates with cutouts for weight savings and strength reasons, but in my experience, they ride nearly identically to the simple, no-nonsense KMC Z410. Look to spend around $10 on a Z410 and choose a color you like, keep it well maintained, and don't worry about chains until it needs to be replaced. Number 5. Cranks. This one may be a little controversial since a lot of us are very partial towards our crank sets, but I do say confidently that most of us who ride high-end crank sets, including myself, don't need a high-end crank set. Omniums, 75s, and Dura-Ace crank sets on the street are mostly for the bling factor. So what is good enough? When upgrading cranks, I recommend at least buying something that's 144 BCD, since it's easier to find quality round chain rings in that size. As far as ride quality and durability go, my personal favorite is the Andel Standard Track Crank Set. 144 BCD, plenty stiff, pairs with a sealed bearing bottom bracket, has a smooth, consistent finish, and this is all at around $100. Number 6, Bar Tape. Some people are very particular about the texture and amount of padding that their bar tape has. I am not one of them, and if you aren't either, you can save a chunk of cash by getting generic cork bar tape for around $10. My roll of cheapo cork tape is a year and a half old, and is still going strong. Bar tape doesn't have to be complicated. Number 7, Handlebars. If you know what shape you want in your bars, whether that's track drops, compact drops, bull horns, or anything else, along with the ballpark dimensions of the bars you want, chances are you can find that shape at an affordable price. 
and the shape is what really counts in a handlebar. You might get heavier handlebars, but you'll also have a heavier wallet. Since there's a lot of different types of bars, it's hard to make a recommendation, but so far I've been really loving my FSA compact wing bars for the past year or so. Since they are an older model, availability will be limited, but I was able to pick up a new set for around $30. And I personally wouldn't spend any more than $50 for bars. When you're shopping for handlebars, know what shape you're looking for, do your research, and find something that's affordable. And those are the seven components that I recommend seeing if you can save yourself some money on when you're upgrading or building. And if you'd like to see the components where you can effectively spend your money, feel free to check out my top five components to upgrade. Also, what components have you decided to save some money on, and how well has that worked out? Let me know in the comments. And with that, I will see you all in Wednesday's vlog, where we will talk about the benefits of napping.